Alright, hi everyone. Um, so I've been wanting to make a shoulder to hooping tutorial, but I've been feeling like I'm not sure if I can explain it correctly because I haven't had a lot of luck in teaching it to people, but I also just think that um, shoulder hooping is one of the more difficult on body things to master just because I think it re you have to get into a certain flow with it and move your body in a certain way to get it to c constantly flow um, for a long period of time. So I, it's definitely one of those tricks that you're going to have to work on for a long time. I think it probably took me um, a month or possibly even two months before I was like satisfied with my shoulder hooping. I like had a hard time where it would just constantly go up to my sh my neck no matter what I did it just kept coming up or like I don't know I just I had a really difficult time but hopefully um I can kind of pass on some wisdom and maybe this will help some of you who are having a difficult time or think you might have it but need a little bit more help so this is going to be my best shot at this anyway um so for shoulder hooping, um, ignore what I'm wearing when you're trying to do this, if you're just starting out or even if you're just trying to get it down. Stick to tank tops and things like that that will keep your skin showing because um, that will help in the grip. Also you probably want a pretty taped up hoop um, and one that's probably slightly heavier. I learned on a hoop that was probably like this size. Honestly, which is, I don't know, this comes up to here on me. It's like a, and it's three quarter inch tubing, but, so I learned on like a pretty big hoop, but, um, it also became a little bit easier for me once I got small hoops. So use your best judgment, whatever you're usually used to waist hooping with will probably work for, um, shoulder hooping. So, um, in the basis of shoulder hooping, you're going to be doing, you're going to be rounding your back like this and popping your chest out like this. So you want to, um, it's not quite this drastic, but definitely make sure that you have your shoulders uh, stretched out and your chest and whatever so that um, you make it a little bit easier on yourself. So um, what helped me... I guess we'll all just go through getting it up first. You should, you'll probably know how to do this, but um, essentially you just want to stick your hands in and then shimmy up. And this is a really kind of a difficult thing to figure out, but um, the one trick that I am going to, or the one tip that I'm going to say right now, which will help with anything, is turning around while you're doing um, anything, honestly, because it's going to give you more time and make it look pretty. So as the hoop is coming around, I'm going to stick my, I'm going to stick one arm in when there's a hole on this side and then right as the hoop comes around and stick my other arm in like this. And that's kind of become second nature to me, but I know it's going to take a little bit of time for you to, if you've never done that before. So just practice sticking your hands in these open holes until you can get your arms down here. And that also will help with the shimmying motion up because what you're going to need to do is every time the hoop touches your arm, you want to shrug your shoulder up so that your arm moves up. Or so that the hoop moves up your arm, sorry. Because every time it comes in contact, you want to lift up so that the hoop basically... So say I have the hoop going around my waist and I stick my arms in. This is like super slow-mo. And the hoop hits here. I'm going to bring it up, then the hoop will, since it's in contact with my arm and I brought my arm up, it brings the hoop up a little bit. So instead of the hoop being down here now, now it's up here near my chest. So if you're turning and you're going like this, this is usually the motion that I use, is I pull up one arm, I stick them in and pull up and then pull up like this, and that's got it on my shoulder. So you want to practice um, trying to get that down, but, um, 
yeah, like I said, the logic is that it hits your arm and you bring it up and then it brings it up onto your chest. You can also try to shimmy it up like that by, you have to bring, same kind of thing, but a little bit more difficult, the hoop's going around and you want to bring your body down so that the hoop hits around your ribs, then you can move up and then surround your ribs and then once it comes around again and there's that space, you can stick your chest in and up on your chest. So that's another way of doing it, probably easier if you want a chest hoop, but it's also kind of, there we go. <laughs> um, when you're just trying too hard, it becomes a little more difficult. But anyway, I'm gonna recommend using your arms if you want a shoulder hoop. The other thing is you can just start it on your shoulders too, and um, by using brakes or whatever you wanna do, say it's down here, and then you just, stick your arm and you can get up to here. So that's how you can get into it. Um, the first thing that I would recommend practicing is chest hooping because then you get the motion of moving back and forth. So I'm just going to start it up here and keep my arms out of the way above my head and do this. And so you'll see that um, when I'm moving I'm going like this back and forth like this. I'm also slightly going to be rotating just a little bit because um, the logic here with this is that every time the hoop hits your back or chest, you want to kind of be rounding it so that the hoop travels easily across. So in chest hooping, when it comes around to the front, you want to have your chest curved out so that the hoop rests really easily on it. And then as it comes around your back, you want to do a cat, a cat back so that it rolls around there. And so it's just this continuous like this. And like I said, spinning around helps. You know, whatever. So you want to get comfortable with that motion and then try with the shoulder hooping. So. With shoulder hooping, you really want to try to make this area around your shoulders and chest as small as possible so that it's easier for the hoop to go around. So, like I said with the, the um, going like this, you want it, you're basically going to just be exaggerating it with your arms and that's going to help you keep the hoop traveling around. So. Um, my normal like stance for doing shoulder hooping is to you want to have shoulders relaxed and you probably want the inside of your arms to be by your ribs. And I usually leave the bottom of my arms kind of free to do a little bit of moving and, ba and balancing kind of, but the tops of my arms stay by my sides at all times. So you want to be relaxed, but you definitely want to keep them down so that it keeps the area that the hoop travels around smaller. So like I said with this, you want to just exaggerate with your arms. So when it's coming around your back, you want to push your arms in like this. And when it comes around your chest, you want to do this. And that's the, the basics of it. But honestly, when you're just trying to go like this, it's hard to just keep the hoop going around. And you'll see just when I was doing that, that I know I was kind of starting to shrug. So that's where um, I think the trick uh, uh, I don't know, the trick lies kind of in that shrugging motion. So at first when I was chest hooping or in shoulder hooping, it was really awkward because the hoop would bounce and it wasn't like going really smoothly. It was bouncing around, it would ride up to my neck, and then I'd have to stick my shoulder in, and then it would fall down. Like, I had all kinds of problems, but after a while, I started to understand that um, not only is the movement in your chest and this popping of your ribs, but in um, through your arms. So you can utilize all of this area to help you out. So when your hoop starts to fall, that's when you want to shrug your shoulder up. Like I said, when you're trying to get it up and you have to shrug your shoulders like this, you kind of need to do a little bit of shrugging yourself as your 
chest hooping, so, or shoulder hooping. So right now, as I'm doing this, I'm pumping my chest back and forth, and you'll see that my arms are kind of doing this up and down like this. So not only are they, when the hoop comes around to touch my chest, coming out, I have the arm that's about to hit up a little bit. This one's down. It comes around my back, and I curve my back in, and then this one's up and this one's down. So that as the hoop goes around, it's going to naturally start to fall down. But if you use your arms to keep it up every time, it's giving that hoop a little bit of a push up, hit your back, it pushes up this way, hits your chest, pushes up that way. So I tend to keep my arms like this and move kind of like this. So it's a little bit like this little circular thing, but at the same time you want to do that. So hopefully that will help um, some of you if you're trying if you can't figure out the motion quite right. But yeah, so I keep my arms kind of relatively like this, and then I use my hands to kind of help with this motion here. Um, the other thing that helped me a lot when I was learning how to shoulder hoop was, was to do breaks, which I have a tutorial for, and, excuse me, and to also just not try and do it for too long. I, also you can, you can end up going vertical if you want to, if you want to work on that, but I would get really frustrated by just thinking, okay, I just have to shoulder hoop because I have to learn and, you know, whatever. And then I'd get so frustrated because it would come down or whatever. But, like, just let it happen naturally. Like, let the process happen naturally. You're going to have to work at it, but don't let yourself get so frustrated that you don't even want, that you're, all you're doing is trying to learn shoulder hooping. You really have to, um, have to just, like, let it run its course and... It does take some time to get down, but once you do, it's probably the most rewarding uh, uh, body hooping that you can figure out because, I don't know, it's, some, it's one of those things that I really do all the time. It's like my happy place with hooping. So anyway, hopefully this little tutorial has helped and if you've, you know, had some problems hooping, or shoulder hooping, this will help you figure it out, and, um, you know, send me a video if you want, if you, like, want some feedback, or you can't figure out what you're doing wrong, or if you just, uh, want anything clarified or whatever, just send me a comment, and I will get back to you. So, good luck, hopefully this will help you with your shoulder hooping and chest hooping.